Well, it's great to be in the house of the Lord once again this morning. Welcome, everybody. It's great to be with you all, and I know that you're going to be blessed. You are going to be blessed. You are going to be equipped. We're going to change. Amen. Uh, because that's what it's all about, change and transformation, to be more like Jesus. I want to remind you today that you are the triumphant church of Jesus Christ. That's who you are. It's who we are. We are, we are the church, collectively and individually. It's our identity. Church is our identity. It's, it's who we are. And the church of Jesus is a triumphant church. It's a glorious church. It's not a defeated church. It's not an unholy church. It's a glorious bride. It's not a bride with clothes full of stains. It's a, it's a holy bride. It's an undefeated bride. Can somebody say amen? That is the church of Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a triumphant church. So I want to talk to you this morning about being a part of this church and talk to you specifically about the fact that we are the body of Jesus Christ. Another word for church is body, the body of Jesus Christ. Your body, if it's healthy, moves and functions. It's not passive. It moves. There's action in your body. We are the body in action. The church of Jesus Christ is His body in action in this world. I want to make sure you understand that, that the church of Jesus Christ is His body in this world. But there's another, there's another word that describes the church of Jesus Christ. It's called the body. The bride of Jesus. He's the bridegroom and we are the bride. And the bride of Jesus Christ is the bride right now in preparation. So it's the body in action who is the bride in preparation. Can you say this with me? It's the body in action that is the bride in preparation. And I want to just read a few scriptures to you today coming from Revelation Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 where the word of the Lord says, Let us be glad and rejoice. Let us be glad. Turn to somebody and tell them, be glad, my brother, my sister. Be glad and rejoice. Paul said to the Philippians, be glad and rejoice always. I repeat, rejoice always. Always. Even when things go tough, what do we do? We rejoice because the joy of the Lord is my? Oh, that one you know. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord says, let us be glad and rejoice. And you'll see the reason why we can be glad and rejoice is because we are the body of Jesus in action. That's who we are. The triumphant church is the body in action. In other words, we operate, we move, we live, we have our being, and we are Jesus conscious and purpose conscious and winning souls and making disciples conscious all the time. We're in action. So, and that is also the bride in preparation. There is no such thing as a bride that's busy preparing for Jesus, you know, when the body of Jesus is not in action. That's a passive bride. She's not preparing. Look at somebody sitting next to you, ask them, are you busy preparing? Now turn to somebody and ask them, but where have you been then yesterday at the conference? Oh, now you're just laughing. No. You see, yesterday when you were watching sports, others work hard because we know that we are the body in. The body is a body in. It's not a passive body. It's a working body. Where were you? The bride of preparation is not a body busy doing their own things. It's a body in action, and it's a serious matter because we are the triumphant church. Jesus said, the church that I built will not be defeated, will not be conquered even by the powers of hell. But I'm telling you, there are many Christians today who are defeated. Many Christians who've become hopeless. Many Christians who've become backslidden. Many Christians who do not have everything that the Lord has called them to have and to be in this world. Many Christians are not doing what they're supposed to be doing in this hour. So Revelation says, Revelation 19, 7, let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to God. Hallelujah. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. So this is the book of Re Revelation, a prophetic apocalyptic book. And it speaks about the future. 
and there will be a future wedding feast. Let me see how many of you will love to be at the future wedding feast. If you don't raise your hand right now, I just really don't know. <laughs> Can I maybe just make sure everybody wants to be there? Show me if you want to be at the wedding feast. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord says, for the time has come for the wedding feast. So it speaks about that time of the wedding feast, a future time. He says, and his bride has prepared, past tense, herself. What did the bride do? She has prepared herself. Which means that is the dispensation that we are in right now. Has prepared means that is where you and I are. When? Right now. We are right now the bride in preparation. We are the bride in preparation. It's the bride to be. The bride and to be. The bride that will be at that wedding feast. Are you looking forward to the wedding feast? Are you still living as if you're going to attend the wedding feast? Do you still understand that you're part of the triumphant church of Jesus? Amen. That's who you are. Listen to me, people. Uh, Church is, is our identity. It's who we are. It's not something we go to. It's who we are. Hallelujah. We are church. (laughs) Amen. Say this with me. We are church. Say this with me. I am church. Body in action. Bride in preparation. Point to somebody and tell them you are church. Body in action. Bride in preparation. And give Jesus a big praise. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. So all of you together are who are Christ's body. So can you see it's the bride and the body? What is the church? The church is ecclesia, the gathering of those who've been called out of the world into the kingdom of God. The gathering, the, the assembly, the those of you who've been with us at the G12 conference over this week, you've seen the church in action. You've seen the triumphant church. How many of you were there? Just quickly, can I see some hands? How many of you will agree what a great experience to see the body in action and the bride in preparation? When I looked over that crowd of people, my heart was so glad. I was so excited. I saw with my physical eyes the body of Jesus in action, the bride in preparation. Hallelujah. And they were the body in action, not because they attended on a Sunday. They were there taking off from work on a Friday and being there on a Saturday. It's the body in action. Working when nobody else is. Can I get a big amen? They're working, moving, operating, understanding who we are. Understanding, hey, this is who we are. It's my identity that takes me to conferences and places like that. It's because of who I am that I go. I don't go for any other reason. And we saw the body in action, the bride in preparation. And please, I don't want anybody, I don't want to preach down on anybody here today and make anybody feel guilty. I want you to become conscious of who you are. I want you to get excited with me that you are part of a triumphant church. It's not a defeated church. You are part of a triumphant church. It's a glorious church. Can I get a big amen? Say with me, the body in action is the bride in preparation. And we're going to trust God to be the body in action this year. And that's why we have our chosen, upcoming chosen. Listen to me. It's time for you to be the body in action. There is no bride in preparation if there is no body in action. Because 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, All of you together are Christ's body. Whose body are you? So who's the head of the body? Who's the head? Who's the bridegroom? Jesus Christ himself. He's the head. He's the bridegroom. And he loves this bride. He loved her so much that he gave his life for her. He died for her. He shed his blood in seven different places for this bride. He gave everything for this bride. And it's about time that this bride stands up and starts to give everything for her bridegroom. Can I get a loud amen in this place, church? You see, but for this bride to give everything, it has to be the body in. 
working, operating, coming to usher training. Can I get a big amen? Coming to prayer meeting intercessions. Hallelujah. Coming to church, inviting people to church, going to cell, becoming the cell leader. The body in action is the bride in. You say, well, I don't like this preaching. Well, this is what this church is all about. <laughs> No, I, don't, I don't agree. I don't care what you agree with. Then go find a place where you can agree. Amen. Because you're going to feel uncomfortable around us. This is who we are. We're the body in action. We're the bride in preparation. Look at your neighbor. Ask them, are you still in agreement? <laughs> Listen to me. If you don't have a neighbor, it means you're not the body in action. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now somebody say, at least I've got a neighbor. No, you must become a soul winner too. Amen. <laughs> I love church. It's tough sometimes to be up here. You know, it's good when you speak the blessing, everybody. Hallelujah, pastor. Whoa, go deeper, man of God. But then when you begin to talk about the work that needs to be done, ish, it's a tough time on the pulpit if you understand what I'm saying here. So this is who we are. And church, listen to me. Jesus is not coming for a bride he doesn't know. <laughs> you know, we've got some people that's getting married here. I, I, I promise you, when they're getting married, and you know, when that veil is lifted, and it's not the person that they thought they were marrying, they're going to run away. <laughs> are you with me? Listen to me, church. Jesus is not coming for an unholy, passive bride. He's coming for the triumphant church. He's coming for a victorious bride. He's coming for a holy bride. He, he comes only for a bride who has prepared. Can I get a really big amen there? I say it again. He comes for a bride that has prepared. You know, when I got married, man, my wife prepared. It was hair. It was makeup. It was dresses. It was money. Uh, uh, my father-in-law, you know, he was bleak. Those of you who got married, you will know. Those of you planning to get married, and we've got a couple here. Pastor Kyle, Avi, those guys, you know, Melissa, uh, um, Fiona, and Megan. They will tell you, it's a lot of preparation. Melissa, maybe where are you? Maybe that's prophetic. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm talking about other Avi's, Melissa. That's prophetic. Yeah, uh, yeah we've had a Melissa got married last year, so, so more than one Melissa then. <laughs> So there's a people getting, and the point is you are preparing, amen? There's a lot of running around. There's a lot of preparation going. Because when your bridegroom lifts the veil, when it's time for that wedding to take place, he is going to marry a specific bride, one that has prepared. Can I get a big amen? You see, because in this instance, the bridegroom has already done everything he could. He's already ready. There's a wedding feast coming. Jesus is coming for a triumphant church. He doesn't, he's not coming for a defeated church. He's not coming for an for a, 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 a unholy church. A church that has been defeated, that's not ready. Jesus comes for the triumphant church. And therefore, we need to be the body in action and the bride in preparation. That is who we are. And so I want us to understand what this bride looks like. What preparation looks like. What this body in action means. We need to have a very clear understanding when we talk about a body in action. What does that mean? What does the preparation mean? Because we need to stay true to the church that was born in the book of Acts. We need to be that church. We need to have understanding of that church, that original church, where Jesus was the witness of her birth, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. Can I get a shout of amen in this place? The dispensation of the Holy Spirit and the church started on the same day. The church of Jesus Christ was born when the Spirit of God was poured out. So what did that church look like? What's the genetic code of that church? And that's what we've been talking about the last two Sundays. So I just want to give, it, for those of you who weren't here, just a quick summary about the DNA of the triumphant church of Jesus. The DNA of the body in action. 
of Jesus Christ in this world, in this hour. And let me tell you something. The hour is urgent, people. The hour is urgent. The world is broken. Darkness is all over the face of the world. We can see it. We see the increase of, of, of earthquakes and famines and economic decay and political instability. Nobody has to be a rocket science to be able to see that things cannot go on the way they're going on. We're heading for something. The coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is imminent. The hour is urgent and the bride has to get herself ready. So what does the bride look like? What's the DNA? The church that was born in the book of Acts. Number one, Jesus is the head of the church. We are body parts. In the word of the Lord in Colossians 8 verse, uh, 1 verse 18, we see that Jesus is the head of his church. And, we've, and this is just a summary of what we've already said and done for those of you who weren't here. And he is the bridegroom of the bride. And therefore, we need to be attached to the body. Ask your neighbor, are you still attached to the body? You see, the problem is today, many Christians have become spectators in the church. Many Christians have become passive. Many believers today are amputated from the body of Jesus. Do you know what amputation is? When they remove a body part from the body, that is amputation. The triumphant church is a church that functions with Jesus as the head and the fullness of the body. And if you feel like you're amputated today and you're not really part and you don't really understand and not really actively involved, then I want to urge and encourage you today. This is why you came to church today. It's because for you to make sure that you are part of this body, we have been baptized with the Holy Spirit into the body of Jesus Christ. Joined after our salvation into the body of Jesus. And it's an active body. It's not a passive body. So if you're doing nothing, and we're only showing up, and we're only spectating, it means that we are not the body in action. Ask your neighbor once again, are you the body in action? Then where have you been at usher training? You see, we need to get practical, church. Oh, I can't because, and Jesus gave us the three excuses. You know, the first excuse, I think, was because of, it's a material excuse. The second one was work. The third one was family. And that's the excuses. What, what, what the bride of Jesus have in our day and time. Now, I understand the work, yes, I know we've got people in shifts and stuff like that. There are certain circumstances. I mean, we're not, we're not foolish and say, leave your work and come live at church. That's not what we're saying. But you see, you will know if, if your excuse is valid. You see, it's, it's about what's going on in your heart. Do you understand who you are? Do you do everything in your might to be a part of the body in action? And if you say, well, I don't like this particular expression of the body of Jesus, which is the local church, then find yourself an expression of the body of Jesus Christ or another local church where you love the vision, where you love the pastors, where you love the cell leaders, where you love the music, but become the body in action. Hallelujah. And leave the excuses and leave everything behind and say, we are the body in action. I am part of the bride in preparation. I'm going to be at the wedding feast. Be determined to be at the wedding feast. You and my children and your children and our families and our friends and neighbors and colleagues, Lord, I'm going to do everything to get, me, to get us all at the wedding feast. Hallelujah. So, are you the body in action? Or are you amputated? And that's a question only you can answer because you can even be here and not be here. Come on, somebody. I say you can be here and not be here. So, are you here? Are you planted here? Are you just keeping the pastor happy? You know, I, there's a few people, I won't mention names from the pulpit, but I know you're just trying to keep me happy. I'm not stupid. I may look a little stupid, but I am not. You're not here to keep me happy, church. And I'm not here to keep you happy and be popular. I, I would love to be popular, by the way. Being popular is a nice thing. But I'm here to ask you serious questions. I want to know where you're at. I've got a job here. Are you planted? Are you part of what we're doing as a church? Come on, is your heart here? You see, that's the big thing. Is your heart here? Is your heart here? Many of our people, I don't think our hearts here, and I'm not judging. I'm asking today. Because it feels sometimes like many of us are just, you know, we're just trying to keep everything happy. And I'll, and I'll tell you, oh, no, it's okay. It's fine. I understand. 
give me your life and your story. I'll, I'll love you because that's my work. And say, no, it's fine, man. I love you. But you know you're not planted. You know you're not body part. You know you're not body in action. You know you're not bride in preparation. You hope you will see the wedding feast, but you don't know. This is nothing to be play or playing around with. Secondly, so first and foremost, the church is the head, and we are the body parts. Secondly, the church of Jesus Christ is a Holy Spirit-driven, Holy Spirit-saturated church. It was born in, the, uh, the church of Jesus was born when the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts 2. With a day and the fulfillment of Pentecost. We are a Holy Spirit people. We are not an entertainment people. We don't wait until the music entertains us before we worship God. No, we're driven by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We do not substitute the Holy Spirit with entertainment. Our lamps are full of oil. We're not like the five foolish virgins. We are ready. We are anointed people of God. We have the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That is the Holy Spirit. Some of us have fallen in love with the gifts of the Spirit, but we do not know the person of the Holy Spirit. You see, when the Spirit of God was poured out, Jesus gave him in the way he received him from the Father. Have you ever heard that? In a very unique way, in all his fullness as a person. You, cannot you can't marry part of a person. Oh, I'm going to marry your arms. <laughs> I wanted to say your body, but that doesn't sound good, so <laughs> I'm going to marry your head. No. We've received Jesus in His fullness. We've received His Spirit in His fullness. We are Holy Spirit-driven people. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Tongue-speaking community. I wish I can get an amen there. That's who we are. On fire for Jesus. Full of the oil of the Holy Spirit. And lastly, and this is just a summary, and then we're getting to the message. Hallelujah. Is that we are a church for all nations. You remember that? We've got to settle our racial issues. We need to take hands across the borders of race and language. We're not divided by race and social status. That's the point. The triumphant church of Jesus is not divided by race and social status. The, the nations of the ancient world, when the Spirit of the Lord was poured out, were represented in that upper room when they spoke in different nations. And all the people could hear them talking in their own vernacular. We are a church of nations, of all nations. We, we believe in that we're the church of Jesus for nations. That, does that sound familiar? Say with me, Jesus for nations. That is who we are. The body in action, the bride in preparation. So just quickly, let's get to what I've come here this morning to say. What does it mean to be the body in action? What's expected from you? What's expected from me? What must I do? Since I am church, since I am the triumphant church, then what does that mean? What is my new priorities? Those of you getting married, I just want to remind you, guys, that you, your priority is going to change a lot. Your priorities change. The Bible says that the husband will leave his mother and his father and he will cling to his wife. Hallelujah. You know, there's some mothers that doesn't like that idea. Oh, there goes my blue eye boy. <laughs> Listen to me. You cling to your wife. Your priorities has changed, my friend. <laughs> and I think for the woman, it's like more natural because the Bible doesn't say, and the wife will leave her mom and dad. So uh, luckily, I've got three daughters. So I'm going to have a lot of sons-in-law, God-fearing men, and they're all going to be there under my roof. Hallelujah. Because the, <laughs> the daughter doesn't leave the mom and dad. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just joking, but the thing is your priorities change. So what is your priority? The body in action. Let's look at four actions quickly. Four very important actions. Let's make this practical. Let's not just have another sermon and I preached my heart out and I felt like, wow, it was anointed and we all leave and forget. No, let's get to work. Let's be the body in action. Let's be the true bride of Jesus Christ in preparation. Let's make sure that we do not miss the wedding feast. Anybody? Hallelujah. What about preach it, pastor? What about getting up from your chair and say, hallelujah, I'm so excited. Woo! I'm going to be the bride. Hallelujah. In preparation, the body in action. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Pastor Kyle. <laughs> Let's read. So the fourth part of this triumphant church. So we did, we did, we look at the DNA. Jesus is the head. It's a Holy Spirit driven church. It's a church across all nations. It's also a soul winning disciple making church. Number four. We're looking at a portrait of the church, the DNA, who we are. Number four. We're a soul-winning, disciple-making church. Say this with me. The church of Jesus Christ is a soul-winning, disciple-making church. You see, Jesus gave them the great commission before he, before he ascended into heaven. And what did he say? Go to all the nations and do what? And make, say with me, there's a making that has to take place. Make disciples. You can't disciple a person if they have not been one to Jesus. You can also not disciple a person who is not part of the church. So I quickly want us to look at that dynamic here this morning. Church, let's not just preach. Let's not just have this supply and demand business on Sundays where you came with a need and I preach and you say, oh, pastor, you've You've, you've, pray, you've, you've preached in accordance with my need. I pray for you. And then in one year's time from, from now, you've got another need. Hallelujah. And in five years, you've got another need. Because while we're in this world, it's a broken world. We will be persecuted. There will always be needs. But while we have needs, we've got to be the body in action and the bride in preparation. Hallelujah. The hour is urgent. We cannot only focus on our needs anymore. No amen. I thought somebody was going to cheer and say, Hallelujah. Acts 2 verse 38. Let's look at this church. Peter replied, Each of you must do what? Repent. Repent. Metanoia, repent of your sins and do what? Turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what will happen? The message will go out. The witness will go out. Your testimony will go out. And people will repent. What is repentance? It's a realization that I need Jesus and that I need a change. Hallelujah. And once you said, I need Jesus and I got it changed, then your sins are forgiven. And then you, you, you receive a new nature. And that old man gets baptized. It has to be baptized because it has to be buried. And then you receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. That is the gospel that forgives your sins, gives you a new nature, and gives you access to the kingdom of heaven because you're reconciled to your heavenly Father. How many of you are still excited about your salvation, that you've been saved, hallelujah, that you are the body in action, the bride in preparation, that's who we are. That's why David prayed, he says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, hallelujah. So that's the gospel. Do you know the gospel? Jesus came, gave his life, paid for us, paid for our sins, paid for our sins so that we can be reconciled to the Father and have everlasting life. The kingdom of heaven opened to you and I because Jesus came. So, and then we are baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible specifically says you will receive the gift, the gift. Say with me, the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not, so when you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, He doesn't speak about the gifts. Can you see that? In other words, what's the gift of the Holy Spirit? It's the fullness of the person. You receive the fullness of a person coming to live on the inside of you. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. There was only one man who received Him like that before the 120 in the upper room. Who was He? Jesus Christ. When He came out from the baptismal pool, the Holy Spirit of God descended upon him. He received the Holy Spirit in his fullness. And therefore, he became the baptizer of the Holy Spirit because he's the only one that has experience of having the Holy Spirit in all his fullness. When he ascended up and be seated at the right hand of the Father, the Father gave him this privilege of being the one who now gives the gifts to all of those who will follow him. Isn't that exciting business? Come on, give Jesus a big praise. Give him a big praise. Hear the fullness of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. So the body in action, number one, here's what we must do. Our, listen to this. He says in verse 41, those who believed what Peter said. Who was Peter? Peter, you used to be Simon bar Jonah, but now I say to you, you are the rock. Hallelujah. You are like me, Peter. And on this, I am going to build the church. This is Peter. Peter got that revelation, and here he's stood up on the day of Pentecost, and he's preaching. Verse 41, 
those who believed what Peter, the rock, <laughs> the rock <laughs> said, were baptized. Were, and then added. This word added here is the word prostathemi. Can I learn, teach you a Greek word? Prostathemi. Say this with me, prostathemi. What does that mean? That means to properly put. Say with me, properly put. Almost sounds like, is it Gerinel, that lawyer? I put it to you. To properly put, to make work of it, to pay attention to this. Listen, church. To put together with purpose. In. Say with me, in. And in this case, and in this context, the body of Jesus Christ, but with purpose. So, it speaks of a work. This word added speaks of a work. Say this with me, it speaks of a work. Who's going to do that work? We need to do that work. We are the body in action. God does not super, supernaturally just add people to the church. we got to do that work. we got to connect. We need to take information from people. We need to phone them. We need to visit them. We need to connect them to cell groups. Are you still with me? That's the work. That's the body in preparation or the body in action and the bride in preparation. We got to do the work. So four actions for the body in action. Number one, we need to win. Say with me, I need to win. Acts 1 verse 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You see, we think that the power of the Holy Spirit is to entertain us. It's not. We think that the power of the Holy Spirit is to see weird things and to experience great stuff, weird stuff. And I do not deny that we will see great stuff and we will see the supernatural. That's what we will see. I'm not saying we shouldn't see that. But you see, the thing is we got occupied with that. But the power of the Holy Spirit is that we will be able to be worthy witnesses for Jesus. The Bible, Jesus himself said here, you shall receive power, dynamis, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And what will you be? What will you do with the power of the Holy Spirit? What will you do with the person, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? What will you do, church? You will witness. The word witness means that we share what Jesus did for us with others. With the main goal that they will be saved. Are you still witnessing, church? You see, you see winning souls is not for the evangelist. The evangelist does not know squat about your colleague. Hello, church. The evangelist can only equip and train you, but the evangelist is not there to win your colleague, to win your wife or spouse, to win your neighbor, to win your friend or fellow student. No, that's up to you. That's why you receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Say with me, I'm a winner. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Say with me, everywhere. That is your school. That is where you go to university. That is in your family. Your family includes everywhere. Your family is everywhere. Oh no, I just want peace with my family. No, you're there to be the light, to be the salt, hallelujah, in your family. They need Jesus. They need to get ready for the wedding feast, hallelujah. Your colleagues need Jesus. The world needs Jesus. Our government needs Jesus, hallelujah. We need Jesus. We need Him, church. We can't play around. Very few Christians are soul winners in our day and time. We think it's not for us. We think, well, if I come to church and give money and do my devotion, I'm fine. I'm going to heaven. And you know what? I believe that you are going to heaven, but you're missing your purpose. You don't understand your identity. You do not understand who you are. You are church. We are the triumphant church, the glorious church. Jesus Christ is coming for this church. Hallelujah. That's who we are. And the body in action means the first action is that there is soul winning. It walks across and among so many people on a daily basis. But you never think that it's your work, that you've received the Holy Spirit to testify and to witness. And I want to encourage you today. Our chosen starts next week, Sunday evening. Come on, let's fill this place with people. Let's get souls safe. Let's go for the harvest. We're not just here for ourselves. We're here to change our city for the glory of Jesus Christ. We're here to get people saved. We're here to get people prostathemi, added and planted into the church of Jesus Christ. And that's the second action of the body in action. Say with me, the body in action. Our, third, our second action is to consolidate. And the basis of the word consolidate is to make people solid. Turn to somebody, ask them, are you solid in the Lord? 
Some guys like, oh, you know, I don't know. It's a good thing you're at church today. Amen. To properly put together or to attach. For Psalm 92, verse 13 to 14 says, Plant it in the house of the Lord. Turn to the other neighbor. Ask them, are you planted? Neighbor, are you really planted? Let me tell you something about people who planted. People who are planted become part of the body in action. In other words, planted people are a doing people. They understand the vision of the house. Our vision, our vision is to be a people of passion, power, and purpose, to win souls and make disciples. That's our vision. Our mission is to be more like, live more like, love more like Jesus. Because if you can love like Jesus, you will do the command of Jesus. You will do the commission of Jesus. We are here to love God and love people. Love God and love people. That's all the reason we're here for. We're not the church that comes on Sunday mornings and say, go deeper, man of God, go deeper. Please, you go deeper in your relationship with the Lord. Many Christians have become lazy looking for prophets to tell them something about the future. You're into fortune telling. What you need is repentance. What you need is baptism in the Holy Spirit. What you need is to get out and to be the body in action and start doing the work of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? You don't need another fortune telling session for heaven's sake. You don't need it. I'm not your fortune teller. I'm your mobilizer. Hallelujah. Our city is broken. The government needs Jesus. Let me tell you something. South Africa is in a a critical stage right now. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, so many Christians are ignorant. Even so many churches are ignorant in our day and time. But our government is in trouble. South Africa is in trouble. We're battling with load shedding and political instability and economic decay. And the church just want the man of God to go deeper. Hallelujah. We got to go get up, church. Become the body in action. A soul winning body. A disciple making body. Hallelujah. Loving God. Loving people. Understand why we live in this hour. Understand why we we live in this hour. We're so consumed with our worlds and our troubles and our problems. It's a lie of the devil. Get out of your problems. Hallelujah. The only way you're getting out of it is to become the body in action. That was the Acts church. That's the DNA of the Acts church. They sold everything, by the way. You remember? And then some tried to lie about selling their their homes and stuff, and they lie about that, and they fell down dead. They <laughs> killed. Have you ever heard this? Killed under the power of the Holy Spirit. I can show you two people in the, in the New Testament church, in the Acts church. I think it was Sapphira, and Anan- is it Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah, they got slain under the, talking about slain under the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, I want to get slain, yeah. Yeah, be careful. That you don't get killed. Hallelujah. we got to return to be the body in action. You see, we might not suffer physical death, but so many Christians have died spiritually. You're dead. You're complacent. You've lost your passion. You don't take the word serious. You come to church because that's what you do. You feel better after you've been here. But you see, God has a plan for you. you the body in. The body in. Is the bride in. Quickly Turn to somebody and ask them, somebody probably you haven't spoken to before this morning. Are you the body in action? Are you the bride in preparation? And give Jesus a big praise. Give Jesus a big praise. Come on, church. That's who we are. That's who we are. I want you to go and listen to this message again. Some of you don't make notes. You can't remember everything I say. This is critical. If you believe that God has placed you in this church and that you come to hear the word of God and that, and that you, you, you don't look at me, but you see it's God speaking. It's God speaking. Hallelujah. It's Rhema. It's not Armand. It's not flesh, but it's the spirit. It's God speaking. Go and understand what the Lord is saying to you this morning. Please, I haven't prepared a sermon. The hour is urgent, church. I haven't prepared another sermon. I'm talking to you. God's talking to us. God's talking to His church. Take this message here this morning. Spread it. Make notes. Be that. Be the body in action. Let's prepare. The wedding feast is coming. The hour is urgent. Let's get ourselves together. Amen. Let's prepare for next week's chosen. Hallelujah. 
Come on, church. Come on, church. You say, well, I'm not part of a cell. Just show up. We're going to connect you. And this year, we're going to multiply cells. In this year, we're going to multiply destiny training students. In this year, we are going to multiply cell leaders. The site here this morning. I'm going to become a cell leader. I'm going to be a soul winner. I'm going to be a disciple maker. I'm going to be part to plant people in the body of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm going to be the body in action and the bride in preparation. Make a decision with me. If this crowd can make the decision, revival is coming to our city. Hallelujah. And God knows how much I want revival to come. Oh Lord, send down revival. Yes, the Lord says, but get your house in order. Be the body in action. Get prepared. Get ready for what I want to do, church. It's time to get ready. It's time to be prepared. It's time to be serious. It's time to be urgent. Hallelujah. It's time to return to prayer and fasting and studying the Word of God and inviting and getting people to church and going to cell. It is time. Hallelujah. The body in action. Four actions. Win consolidate people who are planted in the house of the lord will flourish in the courts of god you want to be blessed make sure you plant it you want to be blessed make sure you are planted you want to be blessed make sure you are make sure your heart is here to be planted and to be solid in the church means that your heart is here have you given your tithe because the bible says where your treasure is your heart will be You see, a lot of your financial treasures are not here. This church needs you. We need a bus. We need for heaven's sake to replace this carpet that's been so old that I'm so ashamed of. Come on, church. Let's not look for our own houses and our own situations and our own finances. Come on, church. Let's be a church of excellence. Let's be proud to invite the whole city. Let's have the facilities. Let's have the transportation. Hallelujah. Let's have the equipment. Let's have the speakers. Let's have the conferences. Let's feed the poor. Can I get a big amen? Let's partake of our community. Hallelujah. Begin to give. Begin to sow. Begin to be a part. Begin to be planted in Jesus' name. And become part of the solid making process. Whereby we work to attach people in this body. Because if people are not planted, they backslide. If people are not planted, what happens? They become spiritually complacent and they backslide. Two more actions and then we close. Discipleship, and this is an important one. Philippians 3 verse 17, and maybe we will stop with this one today. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your life after mine and learn from those who follow our example. What is discipleship? What is discipleship? Discipleship is all about following Jesus. Not just to follow Jesus with the aim of following, but to learn everything you can about Jesus, to be like, to live like, and to love like Jesus. To do that, you need people in your life. You need spiritual authority. Say with me, spiritual authority. You need a cell leader. You need a pastor. Can I get a big amen? I say, you need somebody. You say, I don't need anybody. I've got Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Well, that's strange because you needed the church and people for you to come to Jesus. You go study the New Testament, you will see that there was relationship with spiritual authority. Say with me, relationship with spiritual leaders and authority. With the purpose of following that leader as they already follow Jesus. My question today is, are you following somebody that's following Jesus that you allow because you know that you've got to be a disciple to invest in your life? Have you got, are you following somebody, following Jesus that loves you so much that they will speak into your life? Have you got such a person in your life? Because if you don't have, it means you're not part of a cell. You don't understand the vision of our house. The other question I want to ask you is, do you have people following you what's following looking at how you serve jesus that's following following an example people jesus has to be modeled in this world it's no good we just talk 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 about jesus jesus has to be modeled god has said to the great commission you go and do what make disciples say with me and making has to take place god spoke to his disciples to make in other words there's a human involvement can i get an amen 
There are certain things that need to take place in relationship that does not take place on a Sunday. And from the pulpit, that's not discipleship. Discipleship is a specific relationship you have with with spiritual authority in your life. Of a person that will invest in you so that you can be more like Jesus. Live more like Jesus. Love more like Jesus. And the New Testament is full of it. That's why Paul said, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine. Don't you think the brothers and sisters didn't have the Holy Spirit? They had the Holy Spirit. They had the Holy Spirit. They were, they were Christians. They became disciples, followers of Jesus. Yet Paul says you need an example. Turn to somebody quickly today and tell them you need an example. You need an example. You need an example. Come on, come on, turn to another person, that one that, that believes more than the other one. Tell them, you need a model. You need an example. You need an example in your life. That's why we need cell groups, church. We, we, we need to get into one another's space to understand who we are. You know, here at church, everybody looks holy. Oh, they're good people. Listen to me. I don't want to know how good you are. I want to know what areas you need to change to be more like Jesus. And I want to help you with that. And the cell leader wants to help you with that. Then we're in business as a church, making disciples. Hallelujah. Who are you following? That's following Jesus with whom you have relationship. And their heart and intention is for you to be more like Jesus. Who are you following? You need that man of God. You need that cell lady. You need that cell uh, 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 man of God in your life. Can't take place in this environment. This, this is not where discipleship takes place. Yes, there's a lot of teaching. Yes, the Holy Spirit awakens in our hearts. You know, certain things. The seed is planted. The Holy Spirit is here giving us the desire to change. But we need models. We need examples. The, words, the world speaks about coaching and mentoring. But discipleship is supernatural. It's got nothing to do with mentoring. Mentoring is a different thing. You don't need to have a relationship with people to mentor hundreds of people. But discipleship is very intentional with people that God places in your life where you have a responsibility to invest in their life so that their formation can take place. And who is following you? Who's following you? Like you follow Jesus. Listen to me, church. You're never going to grow spiritual beyond a certain level unless you have people following you as you follow Jesus. I want to say it one more time. I want everybody please to look at me. I say you will not grow spiritually, mature spiritually from where you are now. Listening to more of my sermons, coming to church more and more and more, doing, praying longer, doing all these things, unless you become the body in action. Unless you do the work, you cannot grow and mature spiritually beyond a certain level. You will remain where you are spiritually. Unless you start to invest in people's lives, become a model, an example for people. Allow them to follow you as you follow Christ. Say with me, the cell group is crucial. Having someone is crucial. Trusting someone is crucial. It's crucial because I need to be made into the image and likeness of Jesus. I need a new example when it comes to my marriage. Maybe some of you are doing well. But God wants to give you an example. I need a new example how to raise my kids. And maybe some of you are doing well. But we do need an example. I will never trust somebody who is not submitted to a spiritual leader. I will not. Because they are not being formed. Character is not being formed into the image and likeness of Jesus. You can trust me because I'm a disciple. I can't lead people if I am not following somebody else who's following Jesus, who are interested in making me the man God has called me to be. And this is why I want to honor my pastors, Pastor Bert and Pastor Shanae. For more than a decade, they've invested into my life. I've got a theological degree. I've got a degree in engineering. I can say, well, I'm equipped. I've got the Holy Spirit. I can preach. I understand the Word of God, you see, but I need somebody that invests into my life to come here and to be the best spiritual father in this home so that you can grow and be more like Jesus. I want to tell you today, you can trust me because there are people to whom I am accountable as a man standing before you, to who I am submitted as a man standing before you. 
that spoke into my life, that corrected my thinking, that helped me to be the pastor and the minister I am today. We need God's people. We need spiritual authority in our lives. You need to follow somebody as they follow Jesus Christ. And you need to get to that place where people begin to follow you as you follow Jesus. Can I get a big amen? Can I get a big amen right there? You've got to be doing the work, church. You've got to be doing the work. There are people longing for people to will invest in their lives. You're, it might be a colleague, somebody you need to reach out. But you see, you can't help them unless there's somebody speaking into your life. And that's why Paul said the following, dear brothers and sisters, pattern, say with me, pattern. Your life's after mine. You know, Paul was also the guy who said, follow me as I follow Christ. He says, and learn from those. Say with me, learn from those. I'm asking you to learn from those. You say, what does it mean? You've got a cell leader. Learn from those. You say, well, you know, they're not pastors. They don't know what they're doing. I've been to their cells. Oh, it was dead pastor. Yes, but I'm still investing in their lives. Just be patient. And as they grow, you learn from them. And if you feel like you're going to grow, you need to grow faster, come to me. We still, you know, we're still at that stage where anybody can come to me and my wife. And we've got spiritual leaders in this house. You can come to us. You understand. So learn from those. Say with me, learn from those. You've got to learn from those. Who follow our example? Who are you learning from? The internet preacher. Who are you learning from, church? Oh, you know, because we all got a few favorite speakers on all the DSTV channels and we read their books. Who are you learning from? You can only learn from those whom you are in relationship with because they're the only ones that can keep you accountable for your life. And say, but you're straying, you're not on the way. Who are you learning from? That's why a lot of people do not understand. You know, what we expect and what we are as a church because we're learning from everybody. Paul said at a certain place, he said, even though you've got many teachers in Jesus, he says, but in Christ I have become your spiritual father. So decide where you want to be planted and decide whose teaching you're going to follow because there's nothing wrong with those teachings, but you need spiritual authority in your life that can keep you accountable to be more like, to live more like, to love more like Jesus. If you receive that, shout amen. Give Jesus a big praise. Come on, let's give him a big praise. Let's stand to our feet.